My friends, peace be with you. In St. Paul's magnificent letter to the Ephesians, he has a vision of Christian life as one in which men and women mature into Christ. They grow up into the full stature of Christ, gently, slowly, deeply within. For St. Paul, this maturity in Christ means something very precise. It means taking responsibility for the gifts we have been given. We have all been gifted by the Spirit of God as the Spirit moves among us. And growing up in Christ, maturing in Christ, means learning how to use these gifts wisely and well as our strength and our understanding of them allows. Eugene Peterson, a spiritual writer, comments on this where he says, life under the reign of God, life in the community of faith, is a life of entering more and more into the world of gifts, and thus, as we are able, using them in a working relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ and with the community he fills. The dynamism seems to be this. We become aware of the presence of the Spirit of God moving among us. That Spirit is the giver of all good gifts. I'd like to say that to deny that we have gifts from the Spirit is to sin against the Holy Spirit. No matter how old we are, no matter how young we are, no matter how strong we are, no matter how weak we are, we are all gifted in some measure by the Spirit of God. As Christians, we are invited prayerfully to discern these gifts and to discern how and when and where God wants us to use our gifts in the service of one another, in the service of the community of faith, and indeed in the service of our wider world, and thus to grow up into the full stature of Christ. Here at uh, St. Francis of Assisi Parish, a gathering of imaginative and spiritual engaged people have designed a way of doing exactly that and are issuing an invitation to you, to all of us, to begin a journey, to start a pilgrimage, to allow the Spirit of God and God's gifts to come alive within us as vital and engaged members of the body of Christ. This program, this journey, this pilgrimage is called the Way of St. Francis. You know, my friends, way is a very suggestive term or word within the Christian tradition. Before the disciples of Jesus were ever called Christians, they were simply called the way. The way because they had chosen to walk in the world in a different way. They had chosen to walk in the world in the way of light, the way of truth, the way of salvation. They had chosen a way of walking in the world with Christ and toward Christ. But the way is also an evocative word because it suggests the classic Catholic experience of pilgrimage, that one would travel in a holy place, to a holy place, sometimes over days, sometimes over months, indeed sometimes over years. And this journey, this pilgrimage, was in the service of penance often, often in the service of renewal, often in the service of Christian hope. There were the great pilgrimage, pilgrimages of the ancient world, people who could desperately 
traveled, uh, sought desperately to travel to the holy places in Jerusalem, and people traveled in, on pilgrimage to Rome to visit the tomb of Peter the Apostle and the, the tomb of St. Paul, the two great martyrs uh, who had been, uh, who lived and died in the holy city. There were people who took an extraordinary journey across northern Spain that began in southern France and 30 days later ended up at the city of Compostela in western Spain, a pilgrimage in honor of St. James. This became almost, if you will, the, the paradigmatic pilgrimage. Pilgrimage walked day by day, they stayed in little shelters, and as a sign of their pilgrimage, they wore clamshells, a clamshell. And in fact, I, I gotta tell you this, that uh, this great pilgrimage across northern Spain, of course, people didn't bathe very often. And when you arrive at the cathedral, at the great cathedral out of St. James in Compostela, there's this big, the biggest incense pot you've ever seen that they would swing from one end of the church to another to try to alleviate the smells of all the pilgrims who arrived there. So I have to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that men and women who enter into pilgrimages don't often smell all that great as part of the, part of the journey of the pilgrimage. But how about, my friends, this way of St. Francis? What, what, what are we offering you in your life? We are inviting you to prayerfully enter deeply into the presence of the Spirit of Christ as that Spirit moves within you. We are inviting you into a pilgrimage in a journey that will assist you in discerning what Christ's purposes are for you, what his vision is for you, what he is inviting you to. We are inviting you into a process that will examine the choices that you make in your relationships, in your jobs, and indeed in your connections and service to the wider community. It is a journey finally that asks you to recognize the presence, the centrality of the presence of the Eucharist, which is of course the great gift that we receive as a church and the gift that impels us, as a matter of fact, to, our, to share our gifts with the wider world. The way of St. Francis is designed indeed as a pilgrimage. And as all pilgrimages have had over the last 2,000 years, they have stops along the way. The stops along the way enable you to focus on certain central themes and issues that are important to us as Christians. So for example, if you choose to start this way, if you choose to start making this journey, if you choose to start entering to this pilgrimage, there are stops along the way in which you're invited to reflect on the kind of person of prayer you are, what sort of prayer engages you, what, how, do, how can you deepen your prayer life? How can you create within yourself the space for the Spirit of God to act? Another stop on the way will focus on, again, God's purposes for you. You are uniquely loved and gifted. Where does God and Christ and the power of the Spirit want you to use those gifts? Many of you have treasure. One stop along the way will raise the question of how you use your treasure. How do you invest your treasure? How do you share what you have as a matter of fact with the wider world? Another stop along the way will explore the often painful and challenging areas of relationships. How can, as a matter of fact, your relationship with your family, your friends, your community be deepened by a deepened love for Christ? And finally, we always have to look beyond ourselves to the wider world. The great gift of centering on God's presence in our life, of responding prayerfully to that presence, of discerning and searching out his purposes for us, is to arrive at some sense of peace and shalom, and knowing that relationships are being rightly ordered, 
And then the question emerges, how can we share that peace and the justice connected with that with the wider world? And then, of course, always hovering over all of this is how can we make and allow the celebration of the Eucharist to be, as a matter of fact, the source and summit of our life as Christians. So, my friends, the journey of the way of St. Francis is, is, is a journey inward. Who are we in the presence of God? What has he graced us and gifted us with? And an outward journey, a journey that sends us out into the world of our commitments and our families and our jobs and our world and this great good creation in which we have been placed. As you know and can imagine, such journeys can be incredibly challenging. We need supports. First of all, I want to say this journey, the invitation, if you accept it, this spiritual enlivening, turning to Christ and walking with him, is done at your own time and your own pace. There are no deadlines to be met or really hoops to be jumped through. This is a gentle journey that invites you to grow over a long period of time into Christ. Like all pilgrimages, there are hosts. Pilgrims are always seen to be sacred people. You know, when they journeyed, people gave them hospitality because, as the letter to the Hebrews says, people thought when they welcomed pilgrims into their life, they might be welcoming angels unaware, in that great phrase from the letter to the Hebrews. And so as you make this journey, there'll be people from our community who will be hosts or people who will assist you if you have questions, if you're struggling, if you feel some darkness, if you feel like you're making any progress. They will be there to share your experience and listen to you, pray with you, and give you the support and hope and perhaps coaching that you need. There'll be symbols of the pilgrimage, you choose to enter into it, you'll be presented with a Tau cross, that cross in the sign of a T that was so important to St. Francis and biblically represents the signs of the elect, people who have been chosen by God. You receive a short biography of St. Francis that'll sort of inspire you. We have a Pope now, Francis, and named Francis, and it seems to me that St. Francis will become ever more popular and ever more engaging because his name will be spoken all the time, everywhere, and at every Mass. And you'll have a bit of a travel log, a little journal that you may keep on the way. Some of you may not find this useful. Some of you may, but it'll be something that you can use to sort of mark your progress. And of course, there'll be an occasional event that will get people together. People like yourselves who are on the journey. Um, to remember that you are not alone, to perhaps listen to a speaker, to be invited uh, yet more deeply into discovering the presence of Christ in your life. And finally, my friends, let me say this. Um, this invitation is not extended to the spiritual elite. It is not extended to people who have already arrived. It is not extended to people who feel they've got it all together and want simply another layer of spirituality on top of their life. This is an invitation for good people who live busy lives, who want a focused way of growing in Christ. People who, in the midst of their complex, messy, and difficult lives, have a deep-seated awareness that they are blessed and gifted and want to give generously as they have been gifted and blessed so generously. I have to tell you one short anecdote about my experience on the road to Compostello. I, about 12 years ago with a couple of friends we tried to walk at least part of it, wasn't able to do the full 30 days. We got our packs ready, we connected, we knew what was uh, what we were responsible for and how this was going to flow. We got out, we walked the first day, walked about a 10 miles to the next place. And on the way, one of my companions, Kathy Griffin, her knee went out. So after months of preparation, we finished out one day of the pilgrimage 
took the train back to Lyon and took the train on to Compostello. All this is by way of saying, none of this is about success. All this is an invitation to start it. It may not, as a matter of fact, you may find yourself falling by the wayside, you may find yourself with a, with a hurt knee, you may find yourself, you know, struggling with all of this, but the, but the challenge is to begin the journey. And trust me, the same Christ who invites you into it will be there with you all the way and will, as St. Paul suggests in his letter to the Philippians, will draw you across the finish line. So, think about joining the way of St. Francis. Um, I think you'll find it a richly enlivening experience in your lives as Christian men and women. Thanks very much.